Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you for coming. It has been over five weeks since the hurricane crisis in Puerto Rico. And unfortunately, it is still a crisis. It is still a, an emergency. You still have over 80% of the people on the island without power, which is unbelievable when you think about it. Thousands of people in shelters, um, people in dangerous conditions where they're drinking water that actually may be poison. I'm very proud of what New York has done in the midst of all this. Uh, joining me this morning, we have a number of people who are representative of the New York effort, which started right away. We went down literally on the first flight after the hurricane to see how we could help. And we've been helping every day since. I want to thank Delta Airlines and Ed Bastian and Henry Kuykendall for the flight today and for the many flights they provided to transport goods. Uh, UPS has provided over 10 cargo planes to transport the goods that New Yorkers have donated. UNICEF and Chelsea Peters are here today. Uh, they've donated hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay for collection and transport. Uh, Kathy Wild and the partnership and Tidal and Alan Fagan, who's here from the Orthodox Union, have contributed in paying for transportation and for water filtration devices that we are going to be bringing down today. Randy Weingarten. One moment for the airplane. Happens when you're at an airport. <laughs> Randy Weingarten and the American Federation of Teachers have been extraordinary in the number of volunteers who have gone down, the amount of money they have raised. They're helping us today with the water filtration equipment. And we have 1199 SEIU. We have Ken Rasky from the Greater New York Hospital Association. Uh, we have the Nurses Association and Jill Ferrillo, uh, who have been providing literally hundreds of medical personnel who have been going down and providing much needed medical services. We have donated over 3,000 pallets of goods from ordinary New Yorkers all across the state that we have collected and brought down. Today we're focusing on water filtration equipment uh, and we are bringing down and collecting millions of dollars worth of water filtration equipment to make sure people at least have water to drink. And that's the focus of today. Uh, but more than anything today, I'm interested in speaking with Governor Rosselló and I want to communicate the attitude of New Yorkers, which is much different than the attitude that we're hearing from Washington, D.C. Uh, Washington is talking about how long the emergency troops, the FEMA troops, can stay there. And there have been suggestions from our federal government, well, you know, they can't stay there forever. New York, we have the exact opposite attitude. When you're talking about the people in Puerto Rico, you're talking about Americans. And we never talk about leaving before the job is done. We never talk about leaving Americans in a critical situation. So this emergency operation is far from over. Uh, and I don't know how the president or anyone else can be talking about uh, leaving when it's been over a month and we still haven't made the kind of progress uh, that we need to make, and you still have millions of people uh, who need urgent help. Also, we bring a different attitude than Washington and the president in we have to find the silver lining in this crisis. The president is fond of saying, well, you know, Puerto Rico needed help before the hurricane. He's right. Puerto Rico needed help before the, the hurricane. But this is an opportunity to actually provide the help that Puerto Rico needed. 
We in New York are coming up on the five-year anniversary of Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy, we went through tremendous hardship. We spent billions of dollars. But we rebuilt a New York that is better and stronger than it was before Hurricane Sandy. And that should be the attitude in Puerto Rico. We're going to rebuild Puerto Rico. Let's start designing now a stronger, more resilient Puerto Rico. And that's where New York wants to help. That should be our attitude, and that's where we can help. Let's design a power system that replaces the old, failed power system. Let's, pro let's design a new health care system. Let's design a more resilient Puerto Rico just the way we're designing a better Florida and a better Texas and a better New York after Hurricane Sandy. So we're bringing down power experts who can help designing a new power system for Puerto Rico, healthcare experts who can help design a new healthcare system for Puerto Rico. The federal government will have to appropriate billions of dollars we want to find out how to use those funds and use this opportunity to find the silver lining and make Puerto Rico better and stronger than ever before. So it's a two-part mission. We're still in emergency phase. Bring down the equipment that people need now on an emergency basis. But let's start talking about the rebuilding and calibrating what this nation should be doing going forward. And I want Washington to know the answer is not looking towards the termination of the operation, because the operation is just beginning. And it's a long road, and there's a lot of work to do. And New York is going to be there as it was from day one until the end. And I believe we have to find the opportunity in all of this to make sure, God forbid, there's another disaster, Puerto Rico is in a better position to handle it than they were this time. I want to applaud all the New Yorkers who helped, the ones who are with us today. Uh, I like to say about New Yorkers, they say we're tough. Uh, we can be tough. But when things are at their worst, New Yorkers are at their best. And there are no more people who are more generous, more loving, more caring than New Yorkers. If you need help, New York is the place to come, always. And New Yorkers showed that again. Any questions on this topic? I can hear you a little bit, but if I like the question, then I can hear you. If I don't like the question, then I couldn't hear you. Well, look, it is not, uh, I don't think it's a political issue. I think it's a governmental issue. And the question is, what is government's responsibility in this situation? And what you're hearing in Washington is they're talking about uh, packing up. And when is it over? What I'm saying governmentally is, when is it over? It hasn't even begun. We're talking about the emergency response, which still hasn't been completed. You still have 4,000 people in shelters. People still can't drink the water. So we haven't even finished the emergency situation. And then step two is the rebuilding of Puerto Rico. And that is months, if not years. And that is billions of dollars. And that's what Washington and the president should be talking about. This is not a short-term operation. We had Hurricane Sandy in New York. We're coming up on the five-year anniversary. We're still not finished rebuilding. And that's New York. And that's five years. 
and the damage was nowhere near what you're seeing in Puerto Rico. But the goal after Hurricane Sandy was, we're going to spend the money, let's rebuild, let's rebuild better and smarter than ever before, a better power system, more resilient homes. That's what we should be doing in Puerto Rico. When we celebrate the five-year anniversary for Hurricane Sandy, we should be thinking in Puerto Rico, this is, there's going to be a five-year anniversary there too. And that's what this effort is all about. Okay? Thank you very much.